वेलकम बैक टू दिस सीरीज ऑन द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द सिविल सर्विसेज मेंस एग्जामिनेशन 2022 एस पार्ट ऑफ दिस लाइक्स पुराना इन टुडेस डिस्कशन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद आवर डिस्कशन ऑन सोशल जस्टिस एंड गवर्नेंस एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द 15 मार्कर्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द गवर्नेंस एंड सोशल जस्टिस and we'll look at this 15 markers with respect to the governance and social justice we see question number 16 question number 17 and question number 18 belonging to these sections and we'll look at this question number 16 it is asking about besides the welfare schemes india needs debt management of inflation and unemployment to serve the poor and underprivileged sections of the society so in this context what is it saying is that you need to look at the market conditions as well when the welfare mechanism is is in the process in the sense first suppose if there are any unconditional transfers that generally happen as part of the welfare mechanism they might be able to meet the demand of the public or of the individual to a certain extent for the reason that you would have multiple market forces which are managing and which are creating a kind of inability condition in this context so what does the question asking about is there needs to be a right balance about the welfare mechanism as well as the economic systems now that is what is saying and when you look at the 17th question do you agree with the view that the increasing dependence on donor agencies for the development reduces the importance of community participation in the development process so this particular question talking about that community participation in the governance system having an issue especially in the context of the financial resource mobilization and when you look at this financial resource mobilization you know finances are the blood line for most of the governance mechanisms and it demands the levels of implementation and it is also ensures the extent of penetration of these welfare schemes so in that context what is happening is that we have to look at the increasing dependency on donor agencies with respect to the financial will reduce the importance of community participation right so what is it talking about it is talking about the participative governance and how is this financial resources or the dependence on the financial resources will become an inherent for such a kind of participative governance that is what is the question looking at now when you look at the next question in this 15 marker section we see that the question number 18 also will form part of it now when you look at this question number 18 it is talking about the right of child to free and compulsory education 2009 remains inadequate in promoting incentive based system for children children's education without generating awareness about the importance of schooling that means it talks about that it remains inadequate in promoting the incentive based system that means no doubt it talks about ensuring a certain section or certain part of the schooling systems to be reserved for children and it also ensures the compulsory education provisions but it does not talk about the incentive based system vis-a-vis -vis a right balance about the importance of schooling and the necessary awareness regarding it that is what is the question saying now it is asking for a detailed analysis of such a it is nothing but the critical evaluation of that act and the limitations that are present with respect to that act that is what is the question being asked because when you look at the news we know that there has been a lot of debate that has been going on with respect to the effectiveness of this rte and also article 21a so in that context let's discuss what are the detailed solutions for such a kind of questions right now here when we look at this particular section the 16th question we were discussing that besides the welfare scheme india needs debt management of inflation and unemployment to serve the poor and underprivileged section so here we need to categorically talk about the balancing of the welfare state mechanism balancing of the welfare state obligation as mentioned in article 38 now once we talk about this we have to talk about looking at the welfare of the people and when we look at the welfare of the people it talks about the basic meeting of the standards basic standards that is basic standards like health 
education, sanitation, the food security and the minimum wages that has to be ensured. Now once we understand this, now why is it talking about a right balance of welfare mechanism vis-a-vis -vis the unemployment or inflation? Now when we look at this, the right management of the welfare mechanism and unemployment vis-a-vis -vis inflation, we see that issue of unemployment and inflation because the unemployment and inflation are going to create a kind of hindrance to the development mechanism, hindrance to the welfare mechanism. And what kind of that? We see that unemployment might create, there is a no means of sustenance and it would lead to the poor standards of living. And apart from that, inflation might result in a regressive kind of taxation. And as there is regressive kind of taxation, you know that the poor becoming poorer further. That is what is the fundamental understanding with respect to managing of this inflation conditions. Then apart from that, we know there is also a, there can also be a condition where the inflation as well as the unemployment can coexist in the context of stagflation. Those issues are also need to be undertaken. Because what happens is when you look at the condition of COVID or the post-COVID, we see that the inflation was persisting and because of this inflation persisting, what happens? We see that this inflation was majorly supply side constraints driven. And not only that, we also see a lot of unemployment that was happening because reduced production capacities in the context of India post-COVID. Now such a kind of thing is going to happen here and when we look at this, the welfare mechanism is being affected. Now apart from that, we see that how can these be managed? How can these be managed with respect to managing of inflation as well as the unemployment? We see that we can talk about inflation indexing. We talk about inflation indexing because now in the context of inflation in indexing, we can talk about the taking the factor of the inflation in the context of welfare mechanism. Then apart from that, we can also talk about certain unconditional transfers. Certain unconditional transfers, for example, we can talk about universal basic income as a phenomenon. Then apart from that, maintaining this aspect with respect to uni uniform, I mean universal basic income, we can also talk about the necessary welfare mechanism that is delivered in the form of kind rather than the monetary aspect. So those aspects can be ensured in this context of maintaining the welfare mechanism with the right balance of inflation and unemployment because what happens is the rational utilization of resources and the implementation will become a major aspect in this context of welfare schemes right that has to be taken into consideration and when we look at the 17th question and here do you agree with the view of increasing the dependence on donor agencies for development the importance of community participation in the development process now here what happens is when you generally look at the understanding of development, we see that we have a governmental body or we have the participation of the government, we have the participation of the private sector and we would also have the participation of civil society organizations and we see that the converging area is going to what is going to fall in this developmental section. And when you try to understand the real meaning of development, it is taking everybody along and making everybody as part of the developmental process. Not only these developmental benefits are being leveraged upon to the population, but also they being the part of the developmental process, right? And when you look at this governance section, in this aspect, what happens is you can talk about that around 3.4 million NGOs are working in varieties of fields. And here, now when we look at this role of NGOs, especially in this context of the developmental process, we see that they can be or the they can become the catalytic agents, the watchdogs and also relief providers. But here what happens is we have to look at that they being dependent upon the donor agencies. Now when they are being dependent upon donor agencies, what happens is you know that the interests might be narrowed. There might be narrow down of the interests that are resulting in or that might affect this kind of objective of that organization. The interests are narrowed. Not only the interest being narrowed, but also there can also result in a profit motive, especially when the agencies are functioning. So in this context, what happens is when we look at this, reducing the importance of community participation in development process, here we see that there is a high penetration of NGOs. Then apart from that, the misuse and abuse of the process, and there is so much of debate that goes on around the authenticity of the functioning of the NGOs. 
and not only that also the accountability and transparency of these ngos now in that context we have to talk about the destructive activism or the blockade activism that is generally seen then apart from that we also see this one size fits all approach then apart from that we also see that there is also a kind of makeshift process that is happening now in this context what happens is we have to see that this dependence this dependence especially now the financial dependence will curtail the independence of the agency now when it curtails the independence of the agency what happens is the community participation is taking an hit now in this context what happens is we can suggest talking about the resource pooling the resource pooling especially mobilization of resources mobilization of resources from the community then apart from this resource pooling we can also talk about the creating a self sustaining chain a self sustaining process especially in this context of the resource mobilization because what happens is this developmental process we have to see developmental planning also the developmental implementation aspect also and the developmental monitoring aspect also and we also talk about the necessary feedback that has to be given in the context of developmental planning that is what is to be ensured and we see that each stage will demand the necessary resources each stage will demand the dependence on the donor resources or the donor agencies now in this context without the erosion of the objective of the organization we have to maintain the objective of the welfare mechanism that actually that organization has been formed for and we also promote this kind of right balance especially in the context of community participation that is what is to be emphasized in this particular question now looking at the other question the right of children to free and compulsory education remains inadequate the right of children to free and compulsory education remains inadequate in promoting incentive based system to children's education without generating awareness now that means it is asking about that rte is inadequate in promoting the incentive based system and also the awareness about the schooling now here what is happening is we have to we can simply introduce it with respect to your 86th constitutional amendment and we can talk about article 21a and correspondingly we see that it is inadequate especially in the context of promoting incentive based education because it talks about it does not talk about the learning outcome because when you look at the acer report that is given by the ngo pratham it talks about the learning poverty that is present in the context of india and you see that this is a trend that is generally repeated in the context of india every year now in that has to be emphasized then apart from that the schools turning into a mid day meal centers rather than learning centers they are turning into a mid day meal centers then also the gender inclusivity in the context of education that is a major miss again with respect to this kind of legislation that has been made again the high dropout and the high absenteeism absenteeism both from the sides of the students as well as the sides of the teachers so that is also a major aspect then society viewing education for employment then also the not demanding the quality it is about the quantity based system not about the quality based system so in this context of understanding what we generally see is that this is not actually promoting the outcome based systems but it is majorly focused upon the output it is majorly based upon the outlay that means it is only focusing upon outlay and output and not an emphasis on outcome that means it is not emphasizing upon the extent or the degree of utility of such a legislation now apart from that when you look at this now what is the importance we have to talk about the parents driven awareness systems then also the necessary participation of both the public schools as well as the private schools we compulsorily have to talk about the awareness generation systems and talk about the education not only meant for it, the employment aspect but it also talks about making a better individual that is what is to be promoted the especially the curriculum system has to be revamped because we see that there are obsolete systems of learning in this context of the rte now apart from that we also have to talk about the skill based the vocationalization the value based education all the systems have to be emphasized then also the regular pedagogy 
and the revamping of the teacher system, revamping of teaching system has to be done and the modes of learning and the methods of learning and the methodologies of learning has to be revamped. Right? So such a perspective has to be brought in with respect to this question. It is asking about critical evaluation. No doubt it has gone for the compulsory education. But has it really realized its outcome? Has it really realized its objective? That is what is the question talking about. In the conclusion, you can say that it is having a kind of transformative potential, especially for the education in the context of the society. That is what is to be brought in to the perspective here in this context of RTE. Because what happens is it devises or it enables the future, future citizenry of the India. Right? That is what is this particular question. So this is regarding your society and governance. And when we look at the general trend of these questions, we see that they are current affairs based. And we see that the major debates that have been happening in the recent past is given about. And one very, very important component of the governance and social justice is it is to do with the evaluation, it is to do with the analysis, it is to do with the examination of various schemes and various policies and the status of the different sections of the society. That has to be kept in mind, my dear. Right? So that is all for the social justice and governance. Thank you.